Today we are analyzing month number 11 of the Golden Age of Comic Books. This ties in with the release of Action Comics number 11 and the 11th appearance of Superman. Let's look at all the comics that were released with a cover date of April 1939. We'll see that this was a dramatic growth in the industry. This had 26 titles on the newsstands. This is the highest there had ever been. When we look at the CGC census, we will see that copies being graded has jumped up dramatically this month, way higher than it has ever been. And all of a sudden, comic books don't seem quite as scarce overall. So a few different things have started to happen as of this month. So let's go through the whole chart, see all the things we discover. DC had the highest number of titles they've ever had on the chart. Two new number ones debuted. This was a dramatic month for them. Sales were definitely picking up and DC was taking more risks. All-American Comics number one was released and would land up running for nine years. There's 22 copies graded by the CGC. Still not a common book, quite, quite hard to find, but just enough copies out there again due to the hefty price tag in the Overstreet Annual Price Guide. DC also released an unusual theme title, Movie Comics, which would only run for six issues this year, so probably not a huge success for them, but it was the first all-movie-themed comic book. And 21 copies have been graded, including three in high grade, making this one of the most common books of the month in high grade. And a fairly hefty price tag on this book as well, due to being an early DC number one. Of course, the most valuable book of the month is Action Comics number 11, with the 11th appearances of Superman and Zetera. And uh, this book is worth over $1,100 in low grade in the Overstreet Price Guide and $20,000 in near mint. If we look at the whole month's total, if you were to buy a copy of all 26 books, the current price guide value would cost you over $6,000 for a low grade set and over $97,000 for a high grade set. When we look at the CGC census, we notice that only three of the 26 books have zero copies graded. That means people are starting to grade these books regardless of whether they have a high price tag or not. There are a lot of books, actually, that are surprisingly cheap from this age. A whole bunch of books that are actually under $40 price tag in low grade. And now Ace Comics number 25 is the most affordable book on the list, under $500 for even a high grade copy. And now there is two copies graded, but no high grade copies. What else do we notice? So what are the three books that are have no copies graded? Feature Funnies number 19, probably due to a low price tag. Jumbo Comics number seven, because it's oversized, it cannot be graded by the CGC. And Funny Pages, Volume 3, Number 3, has zero copies created. This is a surprise because it actually has a heftier price tag. So this shows the true rarity of this book. No copies graded in any condition, including restored copies. Now, there is one Ashcan book uh, included on this list. It is the All-American Comics Ashcan from DC, a one-shot. So this one was not actually for sale on the newsstands. Uh, due to its extreme rarity, has a very high price tag of $1,000 in low grade, 10000 in high grade. So if we don't count that book, we have 25 books on the list that were actually on the newsstands. If the average print run was at least 200,000 copies of each, that means there was 5 million comics on the newsstands at this particular time. And out of the 5 million comics, only 193 have been graded by the CGC and only 20 have been graded high grade by the CGC 9.0 or higher, meaning near perfect copies. So out of 5 million copies, only 20 have survived at high grade and been graded by CGC. This is the highest number it's actually ever been to this point, but still is extremely a low number. Centaur had another big month. Five titles had been relaunched only a few months ago and all between zero and six copies graded, and all medium price tags between $77 and 181 So not the cheapest books, because there's a lot of demand for these Centaur books, but not as high as some of the DC books. So if we look at the DC books, we notice the heftier price tags as usual. And Detective Comics number 26 
is the second most valuable comic of the month at a hefty thousand dollars in low grade and ten thousand in high grade. This book features an early appearance of the superhero the Crimson Avenger. Also Fu Manchu is in this book. Adventure Comics number thirty seven, which was the th sixth issue of this new title. There are fourteen copies graded in total with one high grade copy. And more fun comics forty two, only four copies graded. So that makes that uh, by far the scarcest DC book of the year. And for some reason, it's been well known that more fun comics always seem to be harder to find. Is this due to the fact that it must have been a lesser popular selling book? That would seem to go with it. Or is it just plain luck of what books have survived and they just didn't make the cut? We still have uh, the majority of the books on the list are anthologies, which feature all types of strips, different genres from crime to funny animals to action adventure. Only a few superhero books are starting to break through at this point. At this point, you know, comic books in the modern standard format had been around for six years, and now there had been over 500 comics released. And as we mentioned before, Jumbo Comics 1 through 8 are all oversized that cannot be graded by CGC. It's impressive to see that only three of the 26 books have zero copies graded on the CGC, showing that uh, collectors really are starting to grade the books. And even though these aren't the oldest comics, they're becoming a little bit more common and a little bit more popular. Print runs definitely were increasing in 1939 as more and more titles were jumping up and publishers were taking more chances and releasing more titles 